Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. So welcome to Wednesday night service once again. For those who already know how we do and for those who are new, welcome to our midday service. We hope that you are filled with, oh, thank you, thank you kindly. We hope that you are leaning in so that you can get as close as you can to the word and feel the presence of the Lord in this house, not only why, not only for those who are in the house, but those who are online. So we want to thank you for tuning in. I know it's the holiday season. You could have been doing anything else, but you are here in this moment, and that's because you were meant to be here in this moment. So we're going to go before the throne and just give God um, our hearts and just open up. So Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to be in the midst of your presence, Lord God. We thank you that you have guided us on our way, Lord God. You've let us come here safely, Lord God, but you've also covered us day after day, time after time, Lord God. You woke us up this morning so that way we could be even one more step or closer to you, Father God. So as the word goes forth, Lord God, we ask that you cover our pastor. We ask that you also cover our co-pastor as she is dealing with some things right now, Father God. We just ask that you cover us and we just are standing in agreement for her healing, Lord God. So we just want to give our hearts and we want to give our voices as we begin to lift up your name and we worship you. In your son Jesus' name, we all pray and stand in agreement. We say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. We're going to praise and worship our God this evening. We may be small in number, but we're mighty in praise. Amen. Each of us will bless him with your whole heart, with your mind, your body, and soul. Every praise you give, give to our God. Let's sing together every praise. Every praise is to our God.
Great is our God. Hallelujah. The mighty God we serve. Amen. Thank you, God. Every prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Every prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Man, God has just been so good. He has been giving us miracle signs and wonders. Amen, amen. And we are really about to head into a whole nother year. Come on. And we have spent, I don't know about you, but I've got to really experience the power breaking through this year. Amen. That's God. So what about you, Sabrina? How has the power broke through for you? Oh, gosh. You know what? Um, God has promised me that the power will break through um, specifically on a particular situation that I will not share, but <laughs> the glory of God will be revealed when it happens. Amen. 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 So Amen. Right now, every glory praise is to yes. my God. Amen. That's what it says. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs>
such a great God. Amen. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. 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 Apologies, we were doing double duty. So, uh, a little bit of delay. Just trying to serve with the team, right? All right, well, let's pray. Father God, we lift you up, magnify, exalt you. We just thank and praise you for your wisdom and your insight and, and all that you purpose and plan for us today. We decrease that you may increase all of you and none of us. Lord, uh, we thank you and praise you for those that prayed in this house, prayed towards this house, pray, pray on behalf of this house. And Lord, we, we thank you the same peace, presence, and power and virtue they praying on behalf of others impact their lives too. Oh Lord, we know you have a customized word for us, uh, just like you have a customized life for us. So Lord, we uh, open up and yield to all that you have planned, um, uh, a total emptying out of, of you and a total decrease of us all your articulation, all your information, all your revelation, facilitating illumination in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, good evening. Welcome to our midweek service, those that are watching online, and then, of course, the wonderful people here in the house. Uh, before we start, we had a, a wonderful time. Uh, 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 James and Jeanette and the Never Forgotten team, uh, Seniors Ministry, did a great job. Um, at the, well, I was there too. We did a great job <laughs> uh, um, just, uh, um, just ministering gifts, prayer, and uh, a few people actually opened up and accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Who is that? Woodlawn, Woodlawn Haven Rest Home in Mount Holly, about 15 minutes down the road. So, um, so that was a, a, it's a good time. It was good fun. Like you, uh, um, you could tell uh, it's really, uh, it's life-giving, but it's life-impacting. So that means we have the opportunity to give life, but it impacts our lives. You should see Jeanette. Jeanette had bells and everything. Like, so um, you could tell it's, 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 it's always good to, you know, to love on other people. So we had James and Jeanette there. We had uh, Trina, Tia, LaBarber, Shonda. That was it? It me? That was it. All right. So, all right. So, thank everybody for their participating. And there was more people on the team that participated in packing the, uh, the gifts and, and the people that gave uh, to fill up the bags. Uh, it's, it's a, you know, um, just hearing um, from particular people, Gerald. And, you know, uh, I met a couple guys from New Jersey, believe it or not, you know, <laughs> Salem, New Jersey. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. So it was, uh, it was, it was uh, a wonderful time that we had. I wanted to share that. All right, let's get into this word. We've been talking about can't get no satisfaction uh, for the last couple of weeks. And, you know, we, you know, just getting into that, you know, a lot of times people uh, are in situations where um, they can't get no satisfaction because they're doing things outside of God. And so, of course, we said uh, when we do our things outside of God, we end up being what? Anybody? Thirsty. There we go. We end up being thirsty. And the thing is, the tough thing about that word, it comes across with the, you know, if you just walked up to somebody that you love and you said, you know, uh, and they said, well, what do you think my, my problem is? And you said, well, I think your problem is you, you're too thirsty. What type of response do you think you're going to get? Thank you. Right? Is that what you're going to get? No. Like, you know, who you think you're talking to? But, but let's deal with the reality. Are there, are, have we ever been thirsty in our lives? Yes. Were we open and willing to accept somebody telling us we was thirsty? No. So basically we wasn't embracing reality, right? And so 
are there thirsty people in our lives? Right? Are there, okay, so for, for the people that haven't been here for the last two weeks, are there desperate people in our lives, you know, making desperate decisions? And what is really the, the solution to get them out of being desperate? The truth, right? But is it always easy to tell somebody you're desperate or you're thirsty? Right? But that's the reality that's what? That's the pink elephant, right? Right? So uh, we're going to indirectly uh, help out, <laughs> you know, uh, some of us that find ourselves in that, that place, right? And so we got into talking about some, some uh, uh, thirsty proof, proof scriptures, you know, like the thirsty proof our life or, you know, you know, to make sure we're fulfilled. So we talked about... Um, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? All right? And all things will be added. If all things are added, we're what? We're not thirsty, thirsty right? Um, and, and we didn't talk about the scripture, but I'll reference it maybe down the world in my notes. But even when the scripture says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, let patience have its perfect work, that you'll be perfect and entire what? wanting or lacking nothing. Two different, one version says wanting nothing. The other person says lacking nothing. So if I lack nothing, I'm fulfilled. I'm not thirsty, right? Or, or the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not be thirsty, right? And, and so, so we, we got into talking about that. And then we said this in Proverbs 11.22. Um, it says the generous soul or the uh, liberal soul shall be made fat, always fulfilled. So that, you know, so what was done today was generous. It was benevolent. It was thoughtful, like, like it was, and he was excited to be a blessing to someone else. Um, even, um, you know, at the end praying for the young lady that was, was guiding us. Well, that wasn't at the end because we prayed for faith too, right? So, so faith was in tears too, right? So we prayed for faith at the end. Uh, that she was the director. Right, but then before Faith was uh, Xander, that was it. And, um, you know, she was so touched by, by, by the prayer because when, when we're generous, we, and we're not just about ourselves, it has such an impact on lives. So I watch everybody praying. I watch, you know, uh, Trina didn't know I was there, but she was praying, and it was such a powerful, heartfelt prayer. And what I, what I love is, like, no one was, no pretense, no nothing, it's just, you could tell the person's need was pulling on the hearts of everybody that was praying. You know, and because, but the person could pull on your heart, but if you're not filled up with God, ain't nothing coming out. You know, right? So you have to have some type of uh, filling. And watching people, you know, uh, I've watched people grow at this church, so I definitely watch you grow at the church, and just watching just the, an in uninhibited person, loving on person, and, and the whole focus was about their need, not about how I'm going to sound, what am I going to say, what are they going to think, none of that. So, so, so that, that person is not thirsty, right, at all, because you're, that same prayer, prayers and love that you pulled on to pour into them goes through you, right, and fills you up, Right? So that's another way of not to be thirsty, right? And so let's look at, uh, let's look here at Matthew 26. So this is where we ended up last week. So let's get to Matthew 26. And we're talking about, the, the topic is can't get no satisfaction, but it's really like a, a foundation of this world's life, this world system. Early this week on Bible Study Fellowship, we were talking about uh, the kingdom. Remember, we was, we, uh, we was going through Revelations. We were talking about the, the like all these different different things that are happening in this world. And I don't know if it was LaBarbera. Somebody was asking, like, well, it might have been Venetia, but somebody was asking, like, wow, you got so what happens when this happens and this happens? And the Lord was sharing that all this stuff that's happening, we're supposed to be. Um, in the kingdom, <laughs> right? So we're supposed to, we supposed to, how can I say, be living in this world in the bubble of the kingdom. All right, I'll get into specifics in that when I teach on kingdom priorities. 
And so, so that's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all things are to be added unto you. Right? But if we're not seeking the kingdom, but we're seeking to conform to this world, yes, uh, the, 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 the wars, the rumors of wars, the famines, the plagues, the COVIDs, the, uh, the inflation, you know, uh, can somebody get jobs, you know, paycheck to paycheck, all those things are in this world, but we're not supposed to be operating in the, in the world system. We're supposed to be operating the kingdom system. We're operating in the world system is designed to create thirst. Everything in the world is designed to create thirst. You know, back in the BC days when, when I would go to bars, I noticed they always had pretzels, peanuts, and stuff like that on the bar. So I asked the guy one day, I said, okay, so why do you guys have this? He said, because it makes you thirsty. Then we give you something to drink that makes you thirsty. So you're going to spend your whole time sitting here, spending up all your money, paying more. You know, what you pay for that drink cost, cost was more than the bottle, right? The whole bottle. And so it, it's, it's designed to create thirst because that's how they get the resources they need and they never have enough. So they need you thirsty. Nobody needs you fulfilled. You know, they don't need your teeth fixed. You won't come back. <laughs> like, no, we need you each time you come to have a problem because that's how we get paid. You understand? It's not, I'm not saying they're being negative. That's their system. We don't have to live in their system. We can live in the healing and wholeness system, right? Does that make sense? All right, so Matthew uh, 26, 41, this, is, this helps us out, all right? So verse 41 says, watch and pray. So that's an attentiveness. So be alert and make sure you're, you're staying in the attitude of prayer. It says that you enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And so we have to be so consistent in prayer, I was talking to somebody and, you know, they had an opportunity to do something which was very impactful. And I said, listen, I said, so the grace of God caused that impact. I said, and, I, and, and discerning wise, you got ready for what you had to do. I said, God blessed it, but don't take it for granted. God was letting you know to stay ready. So to live ready, don't just get ready. And that's what the scripture is saying. Live ready, don't just get ready. Because if sometimes you may not have the strength to get ready because the circumstances are insurmountable, right? And so you will find yourself thirsty in something that's supposed to fulfill you, right? So live ready, don't just get ready, right? You know, prepare for a situation that hasn't existed yet. All right, so James chapter one, let's go over here. We already talked about two through four and counted all joy. Um, you know, how you'll be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. But let's drop down here to verse 12 in the same chapter. It says, blessed is the man that endures temptation. So, so it's saying that we're going we're gonna to be tempted, but we have to outlast it, right? Right? It says, for when he is tried or tested, he shall receive the crown of life. We talked about crowns uh, yesterday, right? Or was that this morning? Bible study fellowship in the morning. I know we talked about crowns, right? It says, which the Lord has promised to them that love him, right? The crown of life. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. For every man is tempted when he, what? Is drawn away, or he or she is drawn away of their own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. Right? So we always say sin takes you further than you want to go, makes you pay more than you want to pay, makes you stay longer than you want to stay. So it actually creates a thirst and tries to get you stuck in that unquenchable thirst or that insatiable thirst. Right? So, so, so this is scripture is trying to keep us thirsty proof. It's saying, hey. Don't, don't outlast the temptation. Don't yield to the temptation because you yield to the temptation. It might facilitate things that you don't even want to be dealing with. So look here at 2 Timothy 2. We're talking about, again, how to be, how to get satisfaction, basically. We're talking about be thirsty proof, but how to get satisfaction in our life. 
And do you know, some of us, some of us in our lives or some people in our lives um, have given up on being satisfied. They almost have decided to live unsatisfied. Like satisfaction, fulfillment is not an option. Sometimes people do it because of age. Sometimes they do it because of all the different things that's happened. And I was talking to somebody uh, recently, so we were just talking about um, just growing up in different cultures. So I said, so, you know, my first 29 years was in, uh, well, not specifically in Newark, even though that's where I grew up, but in the Essex County area. So Newark and play college basketball in East Orange. And so within those areas is how I lived. And so, so it's, 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 it taught me a lot. I learned a lot, you know, and I was sharing with somebody. I said, I said, I said, Newark is different. So I wasn't dogging nobody else's city out, but I was saying it's different. I said, it, it, I said, I said, you have all these different cultures. I said, but it's something different about the impact of the environment you grow up in. Whether it's, whether it's a, a person grew up in Queens will say the same thing. A person grew up in Brooklyn will say the same thing. You know, they, they, you know, a person grew up in Linda McKinley will say the same thing. But, but I, I said to myself, I said, you know, growing up in that environment, I think I'm, I can pretty much handle I'm ready for any environment, right? In other words, there's not going to be much that's like, ah, what, what's good? It's not going to be much of that. You know, it's not going to be much of that. But it was, it was good and bad because it also could make me overprotective. You know, because I learned to have my head on a swivel, but I can almost over swivel my head. You know, <laughs> I could just, <laughs> you know, I could be all over the place. And so, <laughs> and so, what happens is I had to, I had to utilize my my upbringing and training, but I had to live, I had to offer it to God, and let God show me how it can benefit me in the kingdom. See, so I couldn't just play off of who, what I've been through and what I was. We talk about that in discipleship class, right? Couldn't play off of just experience or, or things of that nature, right? And so some of the things that I was supposed to let go, I just carried around. Like I just, you almost live in a survival mode. You ever just live in survival mode? And, and, and fulfillment wasn't really an option. It was like whatever I need to do to get by. And it was like, oh, no, that's okay. Oh, no, that's okay. Oh, no, that's okay. So it's almost like keep the standard low and I don't have to worry about being disappointed. Does that make sense? I just keep it low. No, nah, no, nah, 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 don't want to do too much, you know, as opposed to let me just go out here and see what God has planned, which, which is totally different. And so, so I think uh, as, as we live our life, sometimes in the midst of our survival, our, our only option of relief is, is the lust or enticements of the world. You know, remember Pastor Mel sometimes said, like, when you, when you live in, in thirsty or you live in, 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 a, in a certain state, you live with a void. And so, like, our, if we're honest, right, so, so, so we, it's a family discussion online and here. If we're honest, what was our coping mechanism? What has been our coping mechanism if, okay, it's a tragedy. Think about, think about what your mind says is a coping mechanism. Or uh, you, you get fired or you break up out of a relationship. Th just ask yourself over the years, overall, I mean, I know some of y'all walking on water with God, you know, well, I just pray all the time. I, I, I get you, I get you, I get you. Where you at now? But let's, let's, let's drop back to the whole picture. We had to measure, put it on a scale, whole picture. What was our response? when it got crazy. Uh, this is dry set anger. How many people, oh, 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 I got to have me a drink. Remember that one? Yeah. He says, it wasn't that far away for some people, so don't do that. <laughs> like, oh, let me think, let me think, <laughs> right? And, but but it's, it, it's like a default. What is, what's happening is I'm thirsty, and this is what I, how I've been trained to quench my thirst. And what does that do? It either numbs me, puts me to sleep, relieves me. But this is the thing. When you are numb, it doesn't go away. You don't feel it no more. Or you don't feel it temporarily. When you come out of the numbness, it's there waiting 
later and greater because you never did nothing about it. So now you're going to be even more thirsty and it's going to be more of a void. And if your default is what? I got to go do something. I'm saying a lustful category is I got to do more of it now. Then I'm numb again, right? Or I'm dis distracted again and then what happens? It, I don't feel it in the moment. When it, whenever I'm doing wears off, when a diversion and distraction wears off, it's waiting later and even more greater because I did nothing about it. And so when you see people break down, they didn't endure the temptation, it outlasted them. And then they fainted in their mind, gave up, and now that's when you find people in a stupor like, well, whatever, you know, you got to die from something or it's just how I am. You understand what I'm saying? But, but the adversary, is like, he's like, cool. Now I got them working against themselves. I don't even need to bother them now. I got them on default crippling themselves. Because you see what I'm saying? Just, just, just think through this. So, so, so uh, from the beginning, the Bible tells this, 2 Timothy 2. So now it's talking about, for me, this scripture tells us that we go through these processes that I just said because we're in this world, right? You know, we know in part uh, we're, we're shaping in iniquity and sin that my mother conceived me. So the scripture is almost saying, hey, it's a possibility. Everybody doesn't because sometimes we're protected by parents. You know what I'm saying? Like we're inoculated. But for the most part, we go through stuff. Even me, I might have went through some protection, but once I got to college, I went crazy. Um, but so, so what I'm saying is we go through stuff, but it's supposed to be, has a shelf life. We're not supposed to be stuck in these, these youthful stages our whole life, right? Like, like there's a grace, because you know there's a time when your parents take on the weight of your sin because you're not accountable yet. That's why bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah, that's the age of accountability where you take responsibility for your walk with God, right? And, 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 and even when I was growing up in Newark, I heard about, I, I didn't know if it was bar mitzvah, but you know, you know, word on the street was <laughs> parents take on your sins to a certain age. So, so I never really asked the actual age, but when I got, when it was like 12, I was like, it's probably 13, it's probably 13, it's probably 13. And I kept changing the age, you know. So I was like, I can still get away with this because they're going to get the heat, which was selfish, but, you know, that's kind of how I was thinking. But it is an age of accountability. In that age of accountability, you're not only taking responsibility, but you're like, all right, I was born in sin, it got me. But I'm getting past that now. Now it's time for me to go live out a purpose life. Does this make sense? Some of us get stuck in time and we're older still living the thirsty life, right? All right don't get bothered because we don't have to stay thirsty, right? Does that make sense? And so, so we, now we, we, we cross over to a place where we can't get no satisfaction. And the adversary is sitting there like, so I, I went, when, when I was uh, coming up, I worked in upstate New York. And when I worked in upstate New York, I used to catch the, the, uh, either the train or the bus over to Port Authority. And I would walk from Port Authority to Grand Central Station and catch the train up to upstate, right? Now, anybody back, you know, back then, like Times Square, they changed it somewhat. Well, they changed it a lot. But back then when I was going through, if you walked down 42nd Street, Every, from every store, somebody was going to come out, yo, yo, you want Coke, you want this, you know, they, like, you know, open up there, yo, I, I got watches, I got, I, what you need, you know, it was, it's like you couldn't get through the block without somebody trying to get, and, and most of it, you know, somebody will offer you drugs like Coke and it would be like baking powder or something, you know, like, so, so what I would do is I wouldn't go that way. Because I knew I was gonna, it was going to be a constant this, this, that, and the other. And even when I tried to go around it, Bryan Park, right? I would try to go around 42nd. People, yo, my man, yo, my man. And, and this is back in the boombox days. So I always had a big, you know, big radio, you know, turned up listening to my music. And yo, my man. But I knew something. Don't stop. Whatever you do, don't acknowledge them, don't stop. And you, and, and, but you got to keep telling yourself, you got to keep confessing, don't stop. I was like, whatever you do, don't, hey, get, keep. yo, my man, my man, because if you stop, they got you. 
right? If you get engaged, they got you. You got to endure the temptation. And, and, and you, know, you know, I had a quick first step when playing basketball, right, for a reason, because I was... <laughs> I was like radio, yeah. I was, I was gone, right? It was a big radio, so maybe the weights was keep, keep help, helping my game too. But what I'm saying is, let's go here. Second Timothy two twenty two. I was trying to set this up. It says, "Flee also youthful lust." Uh, we got to look at the word. It says, "Flee." Now the word "flee" in the Greek is "run with terror," right? It said, run with terror from youthful lust. Now, flee also. That means in addition to everything else you're running from, <laughs> make sure you include youthful lust. Does that make sense? You see that right there? That's in the scripture, right? So it's telling us to escape this, right? It says, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, that's love, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So it's also saying people call on the Lord and they don't have a pure heart. But they're looking for answers and trip if they don't get a response. You ever, you, ever, you ever have a conversation, you know you're not genuine, your motives, but then you mad at the person because they didn't come through, but you wasn't serious, you was gaming, right? And just because they didn't tell you they saw you was gaming, everything in them was like, something ain't right about this. Does that make sense? All right, so it says, flee the youthful lust. So that's another thirsty proof scripture, right? Like, and, and that should tell us it has a shelf life. That's what pulls on me sometimes when that people that I'm close to, they're stuck in time. They're still stuck in stuff. So I'm not, I'm not mad because you slipped and you, and you tripped. I'm mad because you don't realize, are we serious right now? Like, you're not supposed to live in this at this age. You're supposed to be fulfilling purpose, not just having success, but crossing over into fulfillment. Right? Success, and we already know success is fleeting. It don't really... It, it bites you a little bit, but it don't quench your thirst. Fulfillment does, right? All right, so, so the Bible says there's no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. It says, but God, with the, God is faithful. With the temptation, he'll make a way of escape that you'll be able to bear it. So he's saying that these things coming at us is not, what's wrong with you, right? What's wrong with you, Isaac? It is not like that. It says it's common to man because what? We've been born in this world of sin, shaping in iniquity. We've been talking about it during uh, the Bible study fellowship in the morning. You know, Satan, we've been talking about the lake of fire. We talk about everything. He knows he was kicked out. I'm taking some people with me. Right? That's, is that me? <laughs> that sounds like me over there. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it threw me off, totally off, right? I was like, <laughs> am I here in another dimension? Right. But so, so we know that these youthful lusts are common, right? And so he's telling us, hey, I've given you a, a, a script. Then, then he tells us this. David said this wonderfully in Psalm 27. Love Psalm 27. You know, uh, he's, in verse 13. He says, I would have fainted, I would have given up unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, I understand everybody waiting on a sweet by and by and trying to rest themselves in heaven. But, the, but this, the scripture says, David said, I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's here right now. Right? And, and, and so what he said, I didn't quit and yield to all these temptations because I'm believing fulfillment is there for me too. So if the temptations are coming to man, fulfillment should be coming to man too. Because the temptations wouldn't be coming at you if it wasn't trying to distract you from what God's trying to send you. Right? All right, so let's, 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 let's walk through this a little bit. Let's look at, uh, uh, you know, how some of this stuff has processed through time. Let's go to Numbers 11. 
And then we're talking about can't get no satisfaction, and we just did it like so, somewhat of a foundational review of what we've been talking about the last few weeks on like if you do if you if you're doing anything outside of God, it can create thirst. It can make you thirsty, you know. And you know, and that thirst manifests in what? Yeah, I was obviously uh, grappling that lust, but also you end up desperate. And when we're desperate, we don't make uh, uh, God-led. Uh, patient, accurate decisions. It's all about self-preservation. You know what I'm saying? Like, we think, right? When we find ourselves in, in trouble. All right, so Numbers 11 and... Let's see. Uh, we'll say uh, verse 4. Now, remember, the children of Israel were sent to the promised land, and they were told to separate themselves, Right? But, but somehow, some of the people that they were with and bondage with kind of slipped in, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know the story of different people disguising themselves, you know, and doing different things like that. But the goal was so you can stay locked in on what I want you to do and you won't be distracted by uh, how other people quench their thirst. So, so, so we all with God, right? And, and a crisis comes up. And our response is when the demand is placed on us, we place a demand on God, then we're all going to be what? Leaning on God, right? But let's say two or few people come around us that's not, they ain't never leaned on God in their life. Well, when, it's this, when, when it comes up, we're going to be like, well, I had the word says this, uh, we need to do that. Hey, well, let's get in agreement to have faith. But, but the, the, the other people are going to be what? Oh, oh you know, <laughs> we, may, we may die. You know, like this, like, you know, Remember when they sent the spies out, it was two that was like, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. Like they interviewed the giants. No, no. You're not grasshoppers in their sight. You're grasshoppers in your sight. And they said that they came and brought an evil report. Right? Because they were processing on things different. They were thirsty. Right? And so, so here it says, verse 4, uh, Numbers 11:4. It says, and the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. Right? You see that? <laughs> you know, I don't know, fell a lusting, the interpretation is lusting a lust. So it's like maybe double lusting, I don't know. <laughs> it says, and the children of Israel also. So look, wait, who created the lust? The, the people that weren't even supposed to be with them. Right? <laughs> they, they offered something, a consideration. It says, fellow lusting and the children of Israel also wept again and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? Now, they had already got manna, right? And so somebody said, somebody brought up the possibility that what you have shouldn't satisfy you. Had you considered this? So now they're talking about, you know, where they, they want meat. You know, they tripping. Uh, another version says, uh, it says, meanwhile, I think this is, uh, might be the message. Meanwhile, a certain riffraff among the people <laughs> had an insatiable appetite for food. As a result, they wept and turned back, and the, Israel, the Israelis cried out, if only somebody would feed us some meat. Right? So they, they see, insatiable appetite. So that means you have enough. But because you're, in, you're thirsty, you never get enough, right? Insatiable means unsatisfied. That's what lust is, right? That's, lust actually means insatiable. Verse 34, it says this. It says, uh, it says that's why the place was named Kibroth uh, Hatava, because they buried the people there who had insatiable appetite for meat. Those that got thirsty are the people that got buried because their lust had them complaining against God. God gave them what they needed, and they started complaining like that wasn't enough because they wasn't, their, appetite, their appetite wasn't for what was going to nourish them. It was going to be what was going to taste good and feel good. Does that make sense? Does it? Now, Proverbs 27, 20, I'm going to just give it to you. I'm going to read out of the Darby translation, though. So it says, show and destruction, you know, you know, it says, are insatiable. It says, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. So if I, if I lean to the headquarters of hell and I lean to uh, 
conforming to this world, I'll never be satisfied. It just creates more thirst. Ezekiel 16, 28, I'm going to read the, you know, it's a combination of the Darby and the American Standard Version. It says, uh, Ezekiel 16, 28, I just want you to write it down so you can study this for yourself. It says, and thou didst commit fornication with the Assyrians because thou was insatiable. Yea, thou didst commit fornication with them and yet could have not be satisfied. It says you got with people and you keep uh, merging with people under the guise of these my boys, these my girls, these my friends, this my family. We're not playing off of God's desire for us. We're playing off of what's comfortable for us. And we get into these environments where people trigger the wrong appetite. And then so now you, you find yourself unsatisfied. Like, like, let's step back. Let's just be honest, okay? Let's be real. Let's be honest with ourselves because this is the key. Well, okay, I'll be honest with myself and then you guys can choose if you want to be honest with yourself. When, when I look at my life and I look at um, the delays I called, I look at the hurdles I created, they weren't, they weren't the, the, the desires wasn't originated for me. I got around people who offered considerations. And so when they offered the considerations, like, like honestly, even when I first stopped, started getting high, right? I, I lasted as long as I believed I could because you know, middle school folk was getting high. Now, I just walked through the playground, folks, they do all types of stuff, right? So I'm like, man, I'm not, I always didn't like following, you know, man, I'm not, that's not me, I'm not into that. So I, I kind of did it, outlasted it, which was a long time in my city, might not be long for y'all, till my sophomore year in high school. And then, and, and that's when I tell you the story, I told the story, I said, well, maybe, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe it's not them, maybe it's me. And then I said, I'm, I'm stupid, I, shouldn't, I needed the Bible. But I was like, well, can't knock it if you haven't tried it. That's the dumbest thing I could have thought of because once I try it, I'm gonna create an appetite. That's almost like saying, you know, I'm eating good vegetables and I haven't had sweets. I'm in a good place, James. I know it's hard for you to believe, but it is. I had no sweets. And then somebody says, somebody offers me the sweets. I go, well, you can't knock it because you haven't tried it. Well, now I just created an appetite. That's going to do what? It's going to shut my appetite for vegetables down. Dumb philosophy. Now I'm talking about me, Right? I ain't say nobody else, right? I said me, right? And, 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 and I realized there were things offered to me, like, okay, so let's say when I decided to get high, I just decided to get high. I thought of that. I originated that thought. You know what? It's got to be something that's going to take me into a place of inhibition where I have a little more, I'm, where I'm relaxed, a little more confidence, and I don't care. I care too much. Hmm. Maybe I'll go into the lab and create something. Is that how it worked? No, it was offered. And let's look at our lives and look at our choices and think back to how do we make that choice? Who was we around? Like if we're honest, right? We can't blame them because we made the choice, right? But, but did it come from God? <laughs> I, I just want us to think, think through some things. And now we're trying to fix or make right or justify the error as opposed to cutting our losses that we weren't obedient, having a readiness to avenge our obedience, or a, a disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled, right? Second Corinthians, right? Right? I just, I blew it. I shouldn't have done that. Hey, that's how I'm in here in Charlotte. I just like cut my losses. It was dumb. Yeah, if it wasn't for such a, no, if it wasn't for me not connecting with God and connecting with the wrong situation. I'm not even blaming them. It wasn't their fault. It was, it was mine, right? No, yeah, I don't think I'm just talking about me, but go ahead. All right, so 2 second, second, second Timothy 4, right? Right? And, 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 and Ms. Lamar, you, you've been talking about a little bit of this, and uh, Ms. Lamar has done, been doing a great job of walking through revelations with the Bible study fellowship team. Uh, in the morning from 6 to 8, right? Just really, really, uh, I think it's blessing his life, to be honest with you. 
Because he got to study. <laughs> got to spend that time in the Word. Because you get a lot of questions, right? Yeah, welcome to my world. All right, so, so, so 2 Timothy 4, 3. I'm going to read this, uh, a New English translation, but uh, well, I'm going to read it out of King James first. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Right? Uh, it's, it's, it says, um, but after their own lust, they will heap to themselves teachers. Like even get greedy for teachers having itchy ears. Right? So this is saying, the Bible says, man, shall not live by bread alone, but what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So basically, that's, that's the appetite that's going to quench our thirst, right? But it says, time will come when people will not endure sound teaching or rhyme a word or, or what God has to say. But they'll heap themselves up teachers. Now, now you say, well, how, how do people do that? Well, think about a lot of us have done that a long time. We keep looking for people that's going to confirm our compromise, right? And we gather a lot of them. And we say, when somebody challenges us, well, they are doing, how many times, have, have, even if we didn't say it out loud, they are doing it. Well, everybody's doing it. Well, I don't see what's wrong with it because we can see so many people doing it and it seems like they're doing well. We don't know if they're pleasing God or not. It just looks like they're having successes. We never check the fulfillment meter. We confirm it's okay based on the success meter. But I told you, I've been around people, I've counseled people, I've talked to people, multi-millions of dollars. Uh, I, I gave you since his public knowledge, you know, when he came, you know, he, he had developed a relationship with our former pastor. But when Dion gave the testimony of tr driving his Lamborghini off a cliff, this is the time when this athlete was playing in a World Series and a Super Bowl. For two different sports. We went to his house back then. His house is bigger now, I know. But he had 11 car garage, movie theaters, entertainment, all types of stuff. But he sure took that Lamborghini, which cost more than most of our houses, and tried to drive it off the cliff. But if you, if you on the outside looking at his life, what would you say? It's deep, man. I just want to be like, damn, damn. Man, he, man, look, he got this, he got that. Because we look at successes, we don't measure fulfillment. Now, if we looked at fulfillment, how many people would we be following? Would we be following? I know I kind of merged it all together. <laughs> right? If, if, if we had a fulfillment, like, you know, when we put on our lenses, we could see fulfillment. How, how many people would we try to be like? Because you'll start to see the suicidal tendencies. You'll start to see the anguish. you start to see the breakdowns. You, you don't see, you'll start to see them when they go home and go, how do I get out of this? And you're trying to get in it. Right? When, if you really saw how thirsty they was, how they never have enough. Right? It's, 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 it's a difference, right? I just, I, just, I just want us to think through this. It says, so, so I, I just want to read this at a, out of another version, it says, for there will be a time when people will not tolerate sound teaching. Instead, following their own desires, they will accumulate teachers for themselves because they have an insatiable curiosity to hear new things. So it's all about something different, not about what God is saying. So it's not about what's fulfilling. It's just something that's different because it takes a while for me to prove that out so I can live in a compromise longer. And then when I get to the end of that, when I realize it's, it's not the wrong thing, I'll find something else new, let that carry me down for a while. And then since I don't really know what the truth about that is, when I get to the end of that, then I'll keep finding new stuff to keep me busy with not living in truth. It's a dangerous thing. First Timothy 5, 5 through 6. Uh, I'm going to read this out of the Amplified. First Timothy 5, 5 through 6. It says, uh, now a woman who is a real widow and is left entirely alone and desolate, has fixed her hope on God and preserves in supplication and prayers night and day. Whereas she who lives in pleasure and self-gratification, giving herself up to luxury and self-indulgence, is dead even while she lives. So it says a person may be without something that was important, 
and may be on the outside left alone, may look desolate, but has fixed their hope on God. Supplications and prayer day and night is more fulfilled than the person that looks like they have everything, but they've given themselves over to pleasure and self-gratification. Self-indulgence. That person is dead even though they look like they're living. So, because in reality, this insatiable or this, this, this lustful flow, lust blinds us from ourselves. Like we can't really see what truly even supposed to satisfy us. Right? Right? So, and, and when, you, when you find yourself in this pocket, everybody sees you, see you bound but you, but you. It's hard for you to even see the reality that I'm bound, I'm stuck, right? And so, you know, I've given you this uh, the last couple of weeks, but I'm at least give you the scripture so you could, um, you could have it again, search the scriptures to see if it's so. Galatians 4. And this is after our foundational scripture for the church, um, which is uh, verse 1 and 2. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors to the appointed time of the father. So just, you know, preparation for purposes is what that's talking about. But if you drop down here uh, to, which we'll focus on verse 8, Galatians 4, verse 8. It says, how be it then when you knew not God and ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods, right? It says, but now after that ye have known God or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements where ye desire again to be in bondage? He says, I get it. You didn't know. You didn't know me. I get it you didn't know what really is truly supposed to quench your thirst. But now that I've come in your life, you're still chasing what's going to keep you thirsty? And so, so, so we want to conquer this, you know, because the reason why we can't get no satisfaction is because we find ourselves in this lustful, thirsty place. Uh, and it's something that, you know, all of us at some time of our life battle through. So it's not... What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You know, sometimes we go, uh, you know, I got this issue. We, we attach it to hereditary, whatever. Well, whether it's hereditary or not, it's in this world. Like, so it's something that if, if, if we're just like gravity, it's like saying gravity is hereditary. Gravity, if you do nothing, you're subject to gravity. You got to do something to fly. If you do nothing, you're subject to sin and the lust of this world. We got to do something to stay above it. That's why we read the scripture, watch and pray that you enter not in temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak, right? And so we want to conquer. I used to do, uh, I gave you all a plan to change. Was that this year? Yeah, so, so one of the teachings. But, but how their plan to change was originated in, uh, when I was uh, working for the church in Ohio, um, you know, church had grown to like 3,500 people, so our counseling schedule was, was thick. Uh, hundreds upon hundreds of people. And so people would come in, and it was going through things. So I was like, okay, so I got to come up with some, Lord, you got to help me get, give them a system so, you know, they can almost like breadcrumbs, they can take a step, and they, you know, they know they're creating some momentum, and then they can see when they get the results, Right. So the original plan to change was created for somebody dealing with lust. So they had a combination, because I told you I, I would give them the plan to change, but within that category would be scriptures and stuff like that. So they had a breakdown of how to conquer lust, right? Scriptures, different things of how to conquer lust. And the plan to change was born. <laughs> All right, so that's where that came from. And because if we don't conquer lust, we don't realize lust is a possession robber. And so let's, so let's just talk about it just a little bit here. And, and of course, I know we talked about, uh, what do we call it, deceptive desires? Is that what the teaching? Something close. What was it? Deceptive something, right? Uh, I forget. It was a teaching earlier this year. So we talked about a little bit of this stuff. All right. So uh, lust is a, it's a perversion or a twisted version of love, Right? Deceptive addictions, thank you, yeah. So, um, lust is a, uh, thank you, it's a 
is a perversion of love. It's, it's all about cravings. It's, it's being thirsty. It's being hungry. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, having off appetites. It's all about gratifying self. Right? It's not doing what's best. It's just doing what's comfortable and what's easy in the moment at the expense of what's, what's important. Uh, my, my wife was saying this uh, a while ago. Uh, you know, one of the teachings, she responded. She said, uh, you know, lust is irresistible impulses not resisted. So there's these, these impulses, but they're not resisted. And so, so we talked about how it draws us away from um, certain things. You know, when you, when, you know, James chapter 1, we have read through it. But it draws away from us possessing um, and makes us possessive. So, 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 so in other words, God designed us to possess some things. And then the things that we possess are going to fulfill us. But it draws us away from possessing to being possessive or covetous. You know, that's when we're desperate. You know, now we're possessive. You know, we can't even operate in a, in a, in a relationship because where are you going? What are you doing? What are you, like, because you know, we're, we're, we're possessive now. We're not possessing. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we think we're going to lose. Because we hustled or handled our way to get it. We didn't trust God to give it to us. See, God gives you something. It's God that has to maintain it. You do it. You got to maintain it. You're going to second guess yourself. Right? Does that make sense? All right. So, 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 and, and, and so we're trying to convert or, or, or untwist this love, take it from lust and bring it back into God's original intent for us to operate in love. You know, and, and we talked about today going to the, the, um, the rest home that was love. That's about giving. It was, it wasn't about our time our resources, it was about them, right? right? You see what I'm saying? Like this, it's, when we come to the kingdom, we come to church, we do things, it's not about us. And it trains us to not be about ourselves. It can help us get outside of lust. And it can shift things back in love. That's why we start with God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Love God with all your heart, soul, and what? Might, right? Now, now people switch that to heart, soul, and body because they're used to hearing that. But it says heart, soul, and might. It's telling you to, it's, each stage is deeper. Heart, soul, and might. With, with, with your inner core strength and being, love God, right? And so, and, and we think, don't you got enough God? No, God is saying, no, when you do that, you're going to be deep in me. And if you're deep in me, then I'm deep in you. And if I'm deep in you, when, when a demand is placed on you, you respond in love, not lust, you don't respond thirsty. You know, you don't, you, you, like you let it play itself out, right? I think uh, Minister Lamar was talking about that earlier today, just jumping ahead of what you're supposed to do, right? That was this morning, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so, so even faith needs love to be activated, not lust. You're not going to activate faith if you operate in, in lust, because faith works by love, Galatians 5, 6, right? It doesn't work by lust. So think about if faith worketh by love, then faith is deactivated by lust. Right? See, lust steals our, our, our ability to possess our rule in God's kingdom. And we're going to be talking about kingdom prior, priorities here soon. But, you know, we're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, right? Scripture says all creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Well, we're not evolving in the sons of God because the, the adversary is offering us these, these trinkets of, look, you could be the man over here. Look, you could be man over there. The whole time he's trying to divert us. Remember we said it's your audience. He's trying to divert us from becoming the truth. Do you not understand when we fulfill our design? Like, what, what we were designed to do, we're, not only we totally fulfilled, we're totally empowered, and we're totally at peace. We can do successful things. If we're honest with ourselves, we keep telling ourselves, okay, I'll just use me because I'm not. So I remember uh, I spent, I just told somebody just the other day, I spent five days a week in clubs. I, I still was going to college full time. I still was uh, playing college basketball. And I was working full time at a meat, meat warehouse. Matter of fact, I worked about 50 hours a week. Now, you might say, 
Now, how could you do all that? I did. I averaged maybe one hour of sleep because I was on all types of pharmaceuticals, right? And so, so when, I, when, 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 I, when I think about, like, like, what was I thinking about? I'm in clubs five days a week. No, not the clubs that close two in the morning. They close the next day. So I'm leaving the club going into work and had to work 11 or 12 hours in 30, 30 degree weather in the, in the cold warehouse. Still have to pass my college courses and still have to have my game right for college basketball. Like, so there, there, there were successes. There was basketball successes at times. There was, I don't know, I was about to say relationship successes. There was one successes, right? <laughs> Stop lying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? So, like, I'm supposed to be a, a child of God, and I'm settling for you scored this amount of points in a game. I'm settling for, you know, everybody else got to wait in line. I go right into the club. <laughs> I'm special. I'm, I'm behind the scenes with the VIPs. Somebody else living out their dream. I'm special. Cheating myself from fulfillment, right? And so uh, we're, we're going to end with just this, and we'll get into it just a little more deeper. Um, Sure. Next week, I think. Yeah, next week. So make sure that wasn't the vision day. <laughs> One of these Wednesdays, we got to talk about vision. So this, the scripture says the Satan has the same tricks. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Right? The things that are in the world, right? First, first John 2, 16. The lust of the flesh, lust of, lust of the, the world, and the pride of life. We know that when he says Satan comes to steal the word, right? Cares of the world, deceitfulness, riches, lust of other things. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, of pride of life. So we got the end of the Bible, lust of the, lust of the flesh, lust of the world, pride of life. You got the middle of the Bible, cares of the world, deceitfulness, riches, lust of other, other things. You got the beginning of the Bible, uh, she saw it was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes and make one wise. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Every stage of life, Satan is playing the same game. To, get, to keep us thirsty. Lust of the flesh, lust of the world, and pride of life. All trying to steal us from being fulfilled. And so we got to watch losing sight of, 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 of what our true value, authority, and places in this kingdom by being constantly tricked by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the world, lust, lust of the flesh, I'm sorry, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And we'll find ourselves now in a position of getting satisfaction because our satisfaction is in our purpose and our design, okay? And we'll get more into that next week. All right, we're going to end there. And if anybody online or in the house have a comment or a thought or something that made you think about or place you a challenge, please either grab one of the mics and share. Or if you're online, you can call in at the call-in line at the bottom of the screen. Or, and if you do that, please put your TV on mute. Or you can um, put it in the chat and we'll speak it out. Ma'am. Good. Could, could you turn me, Ajo? Hello. Okay. Um, so I just had a question. Did you say um, God designed us to possess some things? Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. What do you mean by that? All right. So, so, so God designed us to, well, ultimately possess the kingdom, you know, but... He's designed us to possess what he purposed and planned for our lives. So, I, so I'll give you an example from the children of Israel. When he, when he took them out of bondage, right, he sent them to possess the land. Now, that land was supposed to be filled with milk and honey, everything that they needed. Mm -hmm. But when they got there, some of them came to their leader, Joshua, and said, hey, you know, everybody got their stuff. What about us? He said, whoa, whoa, whoa. God told you, he promised you this, but you got to go possess it. Mm -hmm. So you got to go get it. You know, you can't be concerned about the obstacles. Hang on God's promise. He's already out ahead of you, but you got to use your faith to go get it. And so same thing when he takes us out of bondage, 
we still have the responsibility to do what it takes to possess. And a part of that possession is believing mm. what God has said. Because uh, when they sent those spies out, two of them was like, nah, man, it's giants in the land, obstacles and circumstances. And they said that was an evil report. So they didn't believe they could possess what God told them he promised them mm -hmm. because they looked at the circumstances. So sometimes we don't believe in our gifts. We don't believe in ourselves. We don't believe in what God's told us. So we're never going to possess what God has for us mm -hmm. if we allow some of these uh, these intoxications and things that kind of, uh, remember, they add fear. Mm -hmm. So fear has you second-guessing yourself. Mm -hmm. Almost fear will have us resurrecting what we've been through and weighing that more than what we're going to. Mm -hmm. And so it makes it harder for us to possess. Did that answer Thank you. your question? It did answer my question. Also, uh, um answer something I have been praying for as well. But I guess I look at uh, possession as a negative term, so I think that's what kind of confused me. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just process my thoughts, but thank you. All right, so, so I said this, so this is good. But I did, well, I said I said it, but the Holy Spirit just said this. When we're in lust, it has us possessive, but not possessing. Mm. So what possessive being, you know, you know like, you know, sometimes we be in relationships and people are possessive. Mm -hmm. That's that lust in them. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Okay. As opposed to allowing themselves, if it's God, to possess what God has for them. So if it's what God has for you, then you let it all play out. You walk by mm -hmm. faith. But you're not controlling or possessive. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. That helped, yeah. Okay. You. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing? Good, man. How um, are you today? One of the things that stood out to me um, in just you speaking when that first John came up um, and also on the teaching, how we'll rise up teachers, um, it was so powerful to me because it allows me to see where I have went off. I got you. Um, coming home from prison after serving 12 years and, and, and doing so many successful things right, um, that success, and in this moment, identifying where the fulfillment stopped, right, um, going achievement after achievement after achievement after achievement after achievement, things that said that couldn't be done are being done, and as you said, he wraps himself, the, the, the adversary wraps himself in those three things, so it's like, okay, Josh, you got this, you got this, you got this, but if I can hide in That's good. the pride of life, if I can hide in your successes, then I can continue to bring these people around who may take this piece from you, take that piece from you, mm. and you're thinking in your own mind, or I'm thinking in my own mind, oh, I identify you, I'm good. I identify you, I'm good. But the residue of them is still on me. So now as I continue to keep succeeding in life, I'm wondering why I don't feel the fulfillment. Mm. So now I think I got to learn more. So now it's kind of like you see on social media and Instagram and all of this, you got the financial literacy, you got this, you got that, you got this. And so long as a culture, we've said, well, we never knew. I just didn't have the information. So now, as you said, being wrapped in the pride of life and things of those things, the adversary says, okay, well, I'm going to give them so much information, they ain't going to know what to do with it. <laughs> so now I'm going to wrap you in it, and that's where I'm at. That's, that's, I have to speak for me in, in my journey of where I'm at, even in going through a divorce now and identifying like, yo, you was wrong. Yo, you fumbled the ball right there. Yo, you tried to make someone else what you were. You tried to force that onto somebody else. I have to just take my ownership in it. It doesn't even matter what other things went wrong. I just got to say, Josh, this is where you're at. You know, and just being completely transparent, I, I've touched over 300,000 this year. Only to turn around and be 30,000 in debt. 
because of all of the things of life. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to give to this. That's just the way my heart is. Or I'm going to give to this because that's just the way I am. Or I'm going to keep giving to this and to keep giving to this. Thinking the giving is going to fulfill me because it is in line with my purpose, but I become so possessive with my purpose, God can't even do what he need to do with it. So now I'm just like, wow. So it's just in certain instances that certain scriptures, because in, the, in, in, in prison for 12 years, that's all I did was study. That was it. But study is different when you get into the game. When, when you actually in the game and you got to utilize that, 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 them hand motions. I love hoop too, so I love the analogies of, of the hoop, so I get it. You know what I mean? But it's just like now when you get in the game, it's like, Okay, my sufficient grace is unto you and my strength is made perfect in your weakness, but you weak right now and depending on you. Mm. You know, you, 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 you're touching this and people are saying, oh, you're achieving this and you're achieving this and you're achieving this. And the enemy like, okay, well, I'm going to bring this friend from over here and make sure you keep your eye on what you're achieving, but I'm going to make you miss on what you're missing. <laughs> so it's like... All of this is accumulating and happening in my life right now as I speak. You know what I mean? I'm in a half a million dollar house. And it's just like everything I thought in a jail cell that I could not achieve, God gave it to me in less than two years. But in the same thing that he gave me, the enemy was like, okay. Because the foundation that I should have been standing on upon receiving this stuff started to evaporate, right? And it wasn't until, you know, I'm sitting down, I'm talking to my mom and I'm talking to my daughter and they just like, it just don't feel like home. Mm. And I'm like, you don't feel like home. And I'm looking around the house. <laughs> I'm looking around. I'm like, don't feel like home. Like, what you talking about? Like everything in here paid for. Everything is. And I get it. Because now when I walk in, I don't feel like home because I've chased the accomplishment, the possessiveness of the things that in one certain area of my time, everything that you've been talking about over the week, that's how I am. When I, when I begin to progress through those thought processes, the stuck in time, I can regurgitate it because... I feel God saying, okay, it's like working out. It's muscle memory. Mm -hmm. It's muscle memory, but it's going to hurt first because he's going to be like, yeah, you weren't listening. And yeah, you got that. So you're going to feel this emptiness for a while. And yeah, you're going to keep achieving stuff, but the fulfillment still got to come back. So it's like, and just in closing yesterday, James um, had, had, had told me to come He's been telling me to come, another thing. He's been telling me to come. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I, I got you. I'm coming. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm 150,000 up. I'm coming, James. I'm coming. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming. And it's just like now it, 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 it has to. It doesn't has to. And my mom told me, she say, son, it don't always have to hurt for you to get it. It don't always have to hurt. That's right. But the grace of God allows it to hurt. Because that's what brings you back to repentance. So it's like, okay, cool. I got it. But just in closing, yet the other day, we did a program and made history, right? Uh, just complete history. It was amazing. First program to be able to go into jails and actually allow the men before they come home to have their business credit restored, their regular credit restored, to have a business, everything. First, first thing in, in, in history, right? And I'm sitting there and I'm like, and I'm seeing the people around me and it felt different. It felt different because I wasn't chasing the possession of it no more. It just fulfilled itself. When God truly takes control of your life, the fulfillment happens by itself. It doesn't need your push. It don't need everything. Now, that don't mean I got to walk away because I still got 30000 of debt I still got to face. <laughs> you feel me? Because right. the fulfillment wasn't in changing my natural circumstance. It was in allowing God, no, I'm still here spiritually. Now, when you going to get there? 
but thank you. Thank you. Glory to God, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Josh, for being transparent, man. That's awesome. Yeah, hey, Steph. Wow. <laughs> That's just amazing testimony. He had a lot of, a lot of points. I felt, I felt it. I felt it. I felt um, you feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this, this message has just really been, um, I want to say instrumental, I feel like, in my process as far as changing. Hey, you know, you talk a little lower, so oh, you're sorry. close to the mic. <laughs> I got my heels on today, so. Okay. Um, I'm still kind of, I don't know how to think. I don't know how to feel because, Pastor, every time you have a message, I would like to draw like, weren't we just talking about that? We had that exact same conversation because that's what we've been talking about is where did the satisfaction come from in those considerations? Mm. And so I've just been kind of deconstructing a lot of the different things that were built around other people's considerations. That's good. And when I go, when I go back to like where was I the happiest at? And it was me and Gerard used to live off of Ballantyne. It was a two two bedroom apartment. And I mean, that was literally our happiest. And the funny thing about it, he used to work in Lake Norman. And then when we got our house, his new job ended up being right across the street. And we only got the house because we were being told you have to do this. Your kids' lives are not good enough because of where you are. And that was where the seed was planted of why nothing was ever good enough. After I get it, okay, I, I don't even, when I look back, I've never celebrated any small moments in my life. It was just, okay, now on to the next. How can the next one be better? How can the next one be better? And it's like, like he was saying, I was chasing after the next. And it's like, okay, well then what, at what point do you stop chasing? You keep gaining everything you go after, so when do you keep, when you stop chasing? That's so, good. even like when I was talking the last time with you know, the business that I had established, the consideration came when I was working at Time Warner Cable. I was working with a young lady and she was like, you know, you gotta have a business on the side, and you gotta do this, because you never know what's gonna happen. But the funny thing about it, I was satisfied. I loved what I did. It, I didn't get up and just be like, oh God, I gotta go to work today. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. And I allowed all the fear that she was pouring into me and my wise counsel, I didn't listen because my manager, she called me up. She's like, Stephanie, let me tell you something. You got to understand, you can't listen to people who don't follow their own advice. <laughs> <laughs> you would have thought I'd been like, okay, that makes a lot of sense, but no, I'm still just going along with the program. And then again, you know, I ended up allowing fear for me to quit. And the funny thing about it, I didn't realize until those years after, and I finally found out, a lot of the managers were, were protecting me because I had a manager who kept trying to find everything she could do to fire me, get rid of me, but God was covering me and I couldn't even see it. So mm. I let fear make me quit. Mm. Then Time Warner Cable sold it, and everybody got like these fifty, dollars $100,000 pensions after 10 years of working, I ain't getting nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, so everything you're talking about is just like all these decisions of things that I've missed out if I just could have just sat still and just been satisfied where I was. Our life was perfect because our kids were young and we made enough money to live the lifestyle we wanted to live. We didn't have to worry about budgeting and managing money. We were just living our best life. But then when everyone else's consideration came in, it no longer was the focus about family. It was the focus of trying to sustain all this stuff that we thought we had to have because of the different considerations. And so now I'm like in this season where I'm trying to learn how to just be satisfied in the moment, just appreciate what I have, and I don't need the next big thing or the next fast thing or whatever the case, just appreciating being able to come to church, being able to spend time with my kids and watch them grow and things of that nature. And then in this process of trying to deconstruct a lot of those things that I created, 
Because that's another thing. I, when I think of all the money I poured into something, if I just had saved it instead, <laughs> I, you know, I, like, I would never really have to probably work again. Just how, that's how much money has been invested into all these different things. I'm like, man, I could have been shopping. I could have been doing this. But I'm giving it to y'all. Y'all ain't even making me no money. <laughs> but I digress. I digress. Hey, it's okay. Hey, you hey. know, lessons learned. <laughs> yeah. But I just wanted to say that. You got you an know, amen right there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, trust me. I know. But I just wanted to say that I just... I'm excited to see what God is saying because, like I said, every time I, I hear a message, I'm like, this just blows my mind how much God is, like, really dealing with me and talking to me because of what's going on, even with the children's ministry. I just get so excited how what we do down there aligns to the word. I was talking to um, Zipporah about the children's ministry, and so she was pouring into me. And so we're, we're, we're coming up with a superhero theme. And she was like, it was just crazy when I heard this, the superpowers. And we're learning about, like, we're trying to take the, the word, like the fruits of the spirit and stuff, and create superpowers. And the kids are building their own story. And then when they come up here, the message supports everything that they're learning down there and vice versa. So I'm just like, okay, God, what are you doing? I don't know. I've been doing things my own way, so now just kind of letting him just operate and like that fulfillment is starting to come. It's a wonderful place to be in. It's a wonderful place to be. It's a peaceful place to be. Yeah. God bless you. Amen. 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 Um, so so what, what hit me as I was sitting down was that um, I think that I never really asked myself about fulfillment. Mm. You know, like I think it's, it's, it's not, I, I guess I've always felt like it was a privilege I didn't have mm. in the sense that, you know, I live my life out of obligation. I do everything out of obligation, always have. Like it, it's not a, you know, so whether it's work, whether it's home, whether it's school, whether it's, you know, there's always a next thing that has to be done and that's what I do. You know, I do it. Um, and so never kind of stopping to think about fulfillment in those things and, and how like even the absence, well, the absence of the thought of it <laughs> is like creating its own void, right? Like, I mean, in, in the sense that the, the fact that I haven't sat down and, and sat in and sat with God about fulfillment is kind of creating a void that I am not even paying attention to, right? Because I'm just running on obligation. Right. Um, and so, uh, so I've never really necessarily looked at myself as, I've never like looked at myself as unsatisfied, but I think if I sat in it, <laughs> I would probably realize. <laughs> Almost you know, sometimes don't want to yeah, sit in it because yeah, I don't want to see So that's the other thing, right? Is that like, that's, that's true as well. Like I think, I just don't want to stop long enough to think about it, <laughs> you know? Like, I'm just like, okay, well, either way, even if I am unsatisfied, these 15 things need to get done, so we're just going to go ahead, you know? But not realizing that in sitting in those moments and sitting with God and asking and, and, and really seeking fulfillment through God, that so much of that other stuff would, 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 would likely change, um, or at least I'd receive different direction on how to handle it. Um, so I might even get off the hamster wheel. So that's anyway, interesting. It's interesting. We prayed for somebody today, and the Lord, well, the Lord asked me to pray for the Lord asked me to ask them for prayer, and they they said they couldn't figure it out, but it was intentional. Like, oh, it was going off through my body that the person really had a need, and what it, what it is is you what you just said is how they've been living. Mm. So they really they don't really get a chance to stop to see who really loves them because they're always giving out incentives. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And we deserve to experience like people just generally loving us just because. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes we're not stopping right. to allow it, you know, because, but I did this for you, but I did that for you. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. Thank you. Mm. You just made me think about that uh, uh, from earlier today. Anybody online have a thought? Or 
Ladies? Yeah. No? Okay. All right. All right. Nobody else in the house. We'll do our offering and then we'll transition out. All right. Ty, you can do the offering. Uh, if you lay it online, you can give at heirs, H E I R S C C dot org. Hit the giving tab and you can give a Cash App or PayPal as you're led. Um, also, uh, don't forget uh, Girl Talk tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, on a Zoom call. Uh, Bible Study Fellowship. Don't forget the Bible Study Fellowship. At no, we're not having Bible Study Fellowship. It's Friday, right? It's Friday? We are having Bible school. Oh, Saturday, we're not having Bible school. All right, so Bible school is canceled this Saturday because we have the breakfast. All are welcome. If you're watching online, uh, you can come and crash. Um, uh, we have uh, breakfast in the fellowship hall. Um, so the brunch, brunch in the fellowship hall, combination of the Andersons and um, the Baileys are making that happen for the church and Everybody that shows up. Do we have a comment? Go ahead. Yes, no? Yes, we do. Okay, Rhonda said, the more I commune with God, the more he shows me that what he has for me comes with no strings attached. Mm. Only what I do for Christ will last and never be thirsty. Mm. Appreciate that, Rhonda. You know, I mean, that's your, 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 your thirsty proof scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All things will be at. So even with what you were saying, Stephanie, when you re recalibrate or you shift or you use the word deconstruct, you know, or renew our minds is basically what we're saying. Now we just, we're seeking God without... Am I there yet? Am I there yet? I'm living and seeking God. And what you'll find out is God was waiting to pour stuff on you um, that's best for you just because. Like, you'll find yourself, well, I wasn't even looking for this. Well, I don't even need this. But, but I didn't even know this was a consideration because now our life is in fulfilling the purpose of giving ourselves to the kingdom. So God is in the business of doing exceedingly monthly above all we can ask or think. It's just, it's, it's just inevitable, you know, so I just want to offer that. Let's pray over the offer. Um, Father God, we just thank and praise for the opportunity to give, Lord, uh, those that are tithing. Lord, we thank you. You're pouring out a blessing. Uh, we don't have room enough to receive. You rebuke and devour for our sake. And our vine is cast, not cast some for fruit uh, before it's time, but everything we purpose to do is in the perfect time and season with support and resources needed. Also, uh, as we give offering, it's being given unto us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, run over men, given into our bosom. Thank you for honoring us, uh, operating in the system of, of, of kingdom giving to reap kingdom harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your always giving us what we need and putting us in a position where we are fulfilled. In Jesus' name, amen. Tell someone, fulfill yourself in God. You may be dismissed.